Although considered to be one of the less glamorous subjects talked about in the Thousand Islands region, septic tanks are a major talking point right now for local advocates. Save the River in Clayton and experts from on-site engineering in Syracuse partnered together to release an updated septic handbook for residents in local waterfront communities. This project was first started in the 1980s as the Kingfisher Septic Tank Monitoring Program, which provided participants with dye kits to identify leaks in sewer systems. The overall goal was to get people to get their septic systems uh, up and running so that the the raw sewage didn't run back into the river or, you know, into the water table. Now, nearly 40 years later, the program is continuing to provide residents with dye kits to identify issues. Now, nearly 40 years later, the program is continuing to provide local residents with these dye kits to identify issues, which, according to experts, is likely in the region, especially in some of the older historic cottages. Over time, the regulations have become more stringent. And yet all of these pre-existing houses have inadequate, by today's standards, uh, these old legacy septic systems. And the government ha doesn't have any, um, any mechanism to allow them to go and in inspect them or require that anybody ever upgrade. To combat this issue, the handbook for the program has been updated for the first time in 15 years and features new available technologies. According to both Save the River and OnSite, a goal of the new guide is to show residents how versatile and simple new technology is, even on the most unique properties, as well as eliminate fears of cost and safety. Certainly on some of these islands, there just isn't the, the type of soil or the, the amount of square footage that you would need to have a soil-based type treatment system. And over the last you know, 20 to 30 years, there's been uh, a movement to create these in-tank treatment units uh, where an environment inside a, a tank, which is a controllable place, uh, would create an environment where the biological reduction of the waste would occur. Murdoch shared that he has worked with numerous towns and municipalities that have implemented similar sewer technologies. Uh, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. I mean, you've got an island that's very small footprint that doesn't have good soil. You know, uh, we take the pipe coming out of the house, we go through a tank, we put in a little pump station, we pump it up to an elevated area that's got a very small footprint. We use the same approach. And what we found is that these projects don't have to be outrageously expensive. To show how these technologies work in many locations, Save the Rivers Handbook features case studies along the St. Lawrence River. Prior to this, the thought of installing a new septic system or a septic system in the islands was pretty frightening. And I think that this handbook and a lot of this work came directly from Eric, makes it a, uh, there's a kind of a roadmap. A property owner might think, well, this might not work for me because I have this very specific, you know, my property, you know, has strange boundaries or it's very rocky. I don't have the right kind of soil. And I think the case studies really help to make the point of there are all these different circumstances and they all have had successful installations. So, you know, your property can also uh, have, have the updated system put in place. The newly updated Save the River Septic Can book can be found on the organization's website and copies can be found at its office. Die kits for the program can be picked up at Reinman's Department Store in Clayton, New York. For ABC 50 Now in Watertown, I'm Isabella Colello. For more local news, go to InformNNY.com or download the ABC 50 mobile app.